Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today the title is correct. We are getting a semi-guided torpedo or semi-homing torpedo mechanic on the new British Battlecruisers, which is, of course, a split that's coming out for the British Battleship Tech Tree. And this was kind of theorized about, not really with the... British battle cruisers, but more so with the four Sherman, because the four Sherman in real life had guided torpedoes. That's why in game her torpedo firing arcs are so tiny, because it didn't matter, because you throw the torpedo out the tube, then it would of course go off to whatever target it had designated for it. And it was like, even in I think yesterday's video when I had some four Sherman gameplay in the background, someone mentioned how they should give the four Sherman the torpedo ping mechanic like the submarines do, because that's what it had in real life. It had guided torpedoes. But boy, oh boy, I don't think many a person saw this coming for the British battle cruisers. Now, it was theorized that maybe they might actually get their torpedoes because the British battle cruisers, as we'll see here in a second, as they do finally provide some images for them, uh, well, for some of the ones that we didn't see already, they do have their torpedo tubes modeled in the hull. And forever in World of Warships, ships that have torpedo tubes in the hull don't have torpedo tubes in the game because of the restrictive firing angles and because Wargaming said no. There's quite a few ships in game, battleships in game, that should have torpedoes in their hull, like the Nelson, the Texas, a lot of the dreadnought style of battleships had these style of torpedo tubes, and the Canaries, the Tier Six Spanish uh, cruiser, has these as well. So maybe they might finally be, get, be getting their torpedoes with this mechanic. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive on into it now that I got kind of some of the historical context out of the way. Link to this will be in the description down below. I highly encourage you guys to check it out for yourselves as I go through it, or if you want to read along as I read aloud. As always, any relevant images or artwork will be thrown up on screen as we go through it. So here we go. New ships close testing 11.5. Researchable British battleships um, end of... Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. British, 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 British people. Royal Navy, why do you always have to name your capital ships something with an I-N? Like, good God. Indefatigable, renowned Hawk and British cruiser Hampshire, Pan-American battleship Rio de Janeiro. Ooh. And Commonwealth Destroyer Huron have been added to the game for testing. Hey, the Huron! Boy, this is a loaded dev blog, ain't it? Alright. So, there's the Indefatigable there. Okay. A classic example of a first-generation British battlecruiser. Combining, on one hand, the armament and dimensions of a Dreadnought battleship. And on the other hand, the speed and armor of a cruiser. Okay. The Renown. And this is most certainly a, a modernized Renown. This is... Um, not too far off what the hood would have looked like if she had survived her encounter with the Bismarck and had been modernized. Not like we'd be able to see it in real life because the British went and scrapped all their ba battleships after World War II. The lead class of a class of battlecruisers, which at the time that they entered service were the largest and fastest representatives of their type in the world. The ship was armed with 381mm main battery guns and underwent an extensive retrofit in the 1930s, which strengthened its armor and AA defenses. Then the Hawk, which is the Tier 8, a powerful battle cruiser armed with 9 406mm guns. Its AA suite is made up of dual purpose and dedicated anti aircraft weaponry from the 1930s through 40s. Further details about the gameplay concept behind the new British battleships, as well as the reason for choosing the name Hawk, are available in a separate blog post. And for what it looks like, these are all their modernized, at least with the Renown and the Hawk. I don't know about the tier three, but definitely with the Renown and the Hawk, this is definitely their like, uh, well, not really late World War II, but mid World War II modernization look. Um, of course, with if the Hawk had actually been built, that is. I do really like the way the Hawk looks. It looks really sleek and such. All right, so that's their reveal, and here's the big bit right here. These British battleships will benefit from the new torpedo turning mechanic. This mechanic is based on a method used in real life to correct the course of a torpedo after launch. In the game, the mechanic serves to expand the aiming possibilities for ships with limited or fixed torpedo tube angles, as it allows for launching torpedoes in directions that the tubes themselves cannot physically turn towards immediately after launch. Torpedoes will change course toward a selected direction and continue in a straight line. So it's not full-on homing, obviously like the submarines have right now, 
but you can change the direction that they are traveling in. Now, in game, most of the ships that have these, if we're just talking about the torpedoes and the hull, um, there's maybe, th I think the Canaries has like four or six. It's, it's not an overwhelmingly large amount, obviously like the Shimakaze, which has 15 torpedoes on its deck mounted torpedo tube. So it's a very small number of torps. Again, going back to the four Sherman, it's only two. And if you look at the, uh, I think the Renown, you can see them on it. It's like, yeah, it's just two right there in the middle. So it's not a large number of torpedoes. So it's not like you're commanding a wall of torpedoes to go in a certain direction. But obviously, I would like to know more. They haven't really told us much beyond how it generally works. And this, of course, like many, many, many a mechanic before that have been that has been announced in a dev blog and has never seen the light of day, this could very well happen again. Like the long-range radar that the Soviet battleships are supposed to get that only spotted CVs and battleships, but it went out to like 15 kilometers. So this very well could be something that, again, is mentioned once and, we n and it never sees the light of day. However, I like the idea. I do certainly like the idea because this will allow, hopefully, more ships in game to have their historical armament if this works out and again it looks like and sounds like a solid mechanic you're not again homing torpedoes all the way to the target like the submarines you're just changing their direction once they leave the torpedo tubes once and that's it and again there are obviously going to be limits on, well i hope there'll be limits on this to where you know you can't obviously have the torpedo do a complete like 360 you know um obviously you wouldn't want it to do that but I don't think they will be too insane. I imagine they'll probably still have some limits on it. Um, but either way, I'm eager to hear more Wargaming. So let us know as soon as possible some, again, general ideas of how this is going to work beyond, again, just the bare bones description of it that we have there. But again, I'm interested in it. I'd like to hear more about it. And it's a unique thing, certainly for the British battle cruisers and hopefully, again, ships like the Fort Sherman, the Canaries, and a lot of the Dreadnought era battleships can finally get their torpedo tubes activated. All right. Big announcement here, the Huron, a tribal class destroyer built for the Royal Canadian Navy. Unlike the British tribals, which all entered service before the start of World War II, Huron had enhanced anti-aircraft armament at the expense of one main battery turret. Huron is armed with six 120mm guns with a good rate of fire and powerful shells for the caliber. The arcing trajectory of the main battery guns will facilitate firing at targets from behind island cover, but make it difficult to hit enemies at extreme range. Huron is also equipped with a quadruple torpedo launcher that deals high damage and has the ability to launch torpedoes one by one, though they have a rather long reload time. The ship has superior engine settings that allow it to accelerate very quickly and is, moreover, equipped with an engine boost consumable with a long action time. The rest of its arsenal... The rest of its arsenal of consumables is made of a hydroacoustic search with a rather high detection range for a destroyer and repair party. The ship notably lacks a smoke generator. So the Huron, this is the destroyer that Wargaming promised as an apology to Little White Mouse and Tribitsu over the Yukon debacle. Yeah, a finally like accurate historical ship entering into the game that served with the Canadian Navy. I'm very glad it's finally entering testing. Hopefully we'll see it in game soon. And it does sound like it's going to be a proper terrifying destroyer to run across, especially at tier seven, tier seven DD with hydro, a fast engine with engine boost already on top of that too. Um, and a repair party all at the expense of one main battery turret and you get more AA. Now, is it going to be God tier AA? Uh, we don't know, but hopefully, again, more information about this will come out soon. And, I mean, it sounds like it's going to be a, a pretty good DD. Again, I'm not a DD main, but just, again, from what we have here, it sounds pretty terrifying to run across. I certainly, certainly wouldn't want to run across it in a tier 7 or a tier 6 DD or a tier 5 DD. Good God, for sure. All right, the Pan American Battleship Rio de Janeiro, the tier 5. Well, I say the tier five, like there's a well, there's about to be a Pan American battleship line if they keep this up. A unique seven turret dreadnought battleship built in Great Britain for the Brazilian Navy in the early 1910s. The ship is armed with 14 305 millimeter main battery guns that enjoy good accuracy and a high several weight. Rio de Janeiro HE shells deal high damage, have good armor penetration parameters, and have a relatively high chance to start fires. 
The AP shells, however, are weaker than those on other battleships of the same tier. The ship also has a large health pool and good concealment, but has low speed and lacks AA weaponry at tier 5. Oh, oh, and poor Rio de Janeiro. Although, again, not many tier 5 battleships do have good AA. Unlike Asian Corps, Rio de Janeiro has more accurate main battery guns, better HE shells, and a faster reload time, but with a weaker secondary battery. Okay, so it's like a tier 5 Asian Corps, but with uh, crappier secondaries, and it's more focused on main battery guns. Sounds like a fun ship, one of those dumb, derpy battleships that we all love. Kind of like the Asian Corps. You, know, you have a bagillion guns on your ship. Um, but yeah, so, okay, cool. More Pan American stuff, that's always good to see. It's really good to see when any nation gets more ships added to, especially nations that uh, don't have a lot of representation in game already. All right, British cruiser Hampshire Tier Eight. Oh my God, Nelson, who did you go home with? Good God! Wow. Okay, please explain this war gaming. A development of the Surrey class heavy cruisers. This ship is armored is armed with ten 203 millimeter guns at Tier Eight. Dang. They are equipped only with AP shells with improved ricochet angles and a m high muzzle velocity. Hampshire is also armed with two quadruple torpedo launchers with the ability to single launch. The ship has weak armor but special engine settings similar to cruiser Minotaur. It can accelerate quickly but it decelerates like a continent. Hampshire is equipped with the hydroacoustic search and DFA consumables in different slots. The historic counties of England, the famous Shires, were created by the Normans in the 11th century to rationalize the administration of the kingdom, but their roots go back much further in time. These subdivisions made up, of, made up the territorial mosaic of Britain, and it is not surprising that from the 17th to the middle of the 19th century, the Royal Navy sailing ships of the line were often named after these counties. For example, there were the HMS Hampshire in quick succession of each other between uh, 1653 and 1766, in the era of armor and steam, the na this naming tradition returned. For the first five years of the 20th century, 16 armored cruisers bearing the names of the counties of the U UK replenished the British fleet at once. Among them was Hampshire, 1905 to 1916, of the Devonshire class. It is likely the political relevance of the topic played a role. At the end of the 19th century, Great Britain underwent a major territorial administrative reform. One way or another, since then, it has been impossible to manage the Royal Navy of the 20th century without ships of the county, county or the counties class, 15 heavy cruisers in the late 1920s, and eight guided missile cruisers of the 1960s carried these names on board. Among the latter were the 2nd Hampshire, 1963-79. This county of southern England is especially significant because it houses one of the four Royal Navy shipyards, Portsmouth. We at Water Warships have reason that a new British heavy cruiser that could have been built in the 1930s is worthy of this historic name. I know I murdered a couple of those names. It said Shire like the like the Hobbit, but I apologize. All right, so um, yeah, quite a loaded dev blog there. Uh, I thought the got semi guided or torpedoes that can be turned was going to be the highlight of this dev blog, but we're getting Huron finally. Thank God. Rio de Janeiro is also a ship again, a dumb derpy battleship. I really want to get my hands on. It looks interesting. And then the Hampshire. I wouldn't be surprised if either the Hampshire... Yeah, no, the Rio de Janeiro is way too low tier. The Hampshire might be the next dockyard ship after we get to the Puerto Rico back this summer. That wouldn't surprise me. It looks strange and odd enough to be a dockyard ship or maybe even a research bureau ship. But most of the research bureau ships are tier 10. So actually, I think they're... Yeah, no, well, they're mostly tier 10. We have a couple of tier 9s as well. So yeah, interesting ships from the dev blog today and some interesting new mechanics. Guys, let me know what you guys think about these new ships and new mechanics in the comments down below. I'm sure it'll be an interesting time. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. One way to 40,000 subscribers, I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday, have a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.